Today, we are going to be talking about this, the Chaos Pro 1600 milliwatt VTX. Now, this is an analog VTX for analog FPV, so it isn't the type of thing I have covered for a while on the channel, but as I am doing a bit more analog stuff, I thought I'd get one of these in to take a look. What we'll do in this video is give you guys a bit of an overview, show you some of its features and specs, and then at the end, I'll share with you a few thoughts. I'm not going to be showing you any flight footage on this one, for various reasons, so if you are expecting to see something crazy like a 10 kilometer flight, this video isn't going to be the one for you. However, what I will do is give you a good overview of the product itself and give you my thoughts. So, to take a closer look at this Chaos Pro Long Range VTX. Now, as I've mentioned, this supports up to 1600 milliwatts of power output. It is one of the higher power output VTXs that I have seen on the market. If we get it out of the pack, it, you can see inside we have the VTX itself, which we'll take a closer look at in a second. We have an MMCX to SMA antenna connector, so the RF output on this is MMCX. You can use this cable if you want, or you can go direct MMCX antenna if you wish. They also include a little plug for the connection I.O. as well. Now, size-wise, it is 30 by 30 mounting pattern, and you can see that its overall size is a little bigger than that. I think they say it's 36 wide by 36 deep, and then 30.5 by 30.5 on the mounting pattern. If we flip it over onto the bottom, we have a little heat sink, which is obviously what is going to help to get that heat away from the module, because it's obviously going to get very, very hot. And they do have direct solder pads, which is a nice addition down here as well, allowing you to hardwire it rather than use the wiring harness plug if you like. You then obviously have the antenna, the harness input, and then on this side, you have a manual button allowing you to configure the VTX for its various outputs. Now, they say, it supports a voltage range of 7.2 to 28 volts, so it's gonna work up to 6S. It supports smart audio, and as I've said, has that maximum power output of 1600 milliwatts. It also has a dedicated five volt output for powering your camera as well, under 500 milliamp, so you can power your camera if it's a low voltage one if you need to. And it supports power output ranges of 200, 400, 800, and that 1600 milliwatt. And really, they say, other than that, it weighs 9.6 grams, including, sorry, excluding the antenna. Now, that is the basics overview of the VTX. Overall, I have to say the build quality feels good. It's a sort of PCB against the board design, so I'm guessing all of the RF is under the can on this side, and they're cooling it through the PCB. Um, I can't see that there's anything under there because there's no lumps in the heatsink or anything like that to say there's any circuitry here, so any cooling is going to be through the PCB itself. What we'll do next is power it up and I'll get it on the Immersion RC power meter and just have a look at what kind of outputs we get from this. The little instruction book does show us all of the options of what's available. So we can select the channels and everything like that. And then you can select the outputs via the button. It also does support pit mode too. I didn't mention that just now, but it does have that feature as well via the smart audio. So you have the option of controlling it either via your controller, your remote or via an app, or you can do it via the button on the side. Just to quickly show you the RF output levels on this before I show you how you change channel and stuff like that. Now, we've got it on my RF power meter from Immersion RC. Yes, this is the one that's been through the wars. We've torn it down. We've damaged the screen a little bit. However, it has been tested against a known good source. It's still as accurate as it was before. It's still behaving correctly. Now, currently the VTX is on 200 milliwatts, but you can see here it's showing 300 odd. Now, the reason for that is we have 20 dB of attenuation in here. We have two separate attenuators. What I tend to find is on the lower power levels on this meter with attenuation, it isn't as accurate. So it it misreads. We'll check the 200 milliwatt without an attenuator in a minute, but we need the attenuation on there for the high power levels. I have configured it to show attenuation as well, and we're on peak, so we're all fine, we're all correct. So if we now switch it up to 400 milliwatts, there we go, we've gone to 400 milliwatts, and we're getting 440, 450, 460, about right, I'm happy with that. We'll change it now up to the 800 milliwatt setting. Again, 
seven, eight hundred, about right. You know, you can't class this as 100% accurate, but that's pretty good. And then if we go to the max output, which is meant to be 1600, there we go. You can see we're getting 1.4 watts, 1.5, 1.6, there and thereabouts. Absolutely fine. It's clearly pushing out a lot of power. The next thing I just want to quickly do is show you how to change the channels, the bands and the output. And there's a really nice way of doing it on this. And there's a row of LEDs down here on the side that indicate what the current setting is. What I'm just going to do is turn the overhead light off a second. OK, so hopefully that makes it a little bit easier to see. Now, what we have down here on the side is blue, green and red. The blue stands for the channel and there are eight LEDs. The green stands for the band and the red stands for the power output. So to change, I'm just going to put my finger on the center. We press our button on this side and we can just simply jump through each channel with one being at the top. And we can then simply select down through each channel as we move through and then it will scroll back to the top. So that's channel one to eight. Next, if we want to change band, we press and hold again until the green LED flashes. There we go, the green flashed. So we can then choose band one, band two, band three, or race band. So that's how you do that. And then to change the power output, again, press and hold until the red LED flashes once. Wait for it, it's about four plus seconds. There we go. And then we got 200 milliwatts, 400, 800, and then full power is all LEDs on and then we can go back to 200. So it's as simple as that. There's a nice, easy way to be able to configure it simply from the LEDs on the side. However, you can also configure this via smart audio as well. Just to show you a quick spectrum view of this VTX when it's transmitting video, here you can see the channel width highlighted either side of the main carrier, and you can see there's a little bit of overspill either side. However, I have been comparing this to a number of other analog transmitters, and it's nothing out the norm. It's pretty much on par with others, such as the Unify Pro from TBS, and this is at very close range, exactly one meter from the receiving antenna. Once things get out a little bit, all of that fades away. In the UK, this VTX costs just £20, and for that, you get many of the features that you would find on more expensive models from the likes of TBS. In fact, it's nearly half the cost. You're getting higher output power, you're still getting smart audio, and you're getting pit mode and easy controls for the output bands and channels. I have to say, I do think it's a bit of a bargain, and if you're looking to get yourself a very high power VTX, it's going to be well worth a look. Yeah, Yes, the MMCX connector is not going to suit everyone, but personally, I think it's better than having a UFL, and you do still have that options for manually soldering wires if you didn't want to go down the road of a harness. One note I will make, though, is this unit does get very, very hot. On my bench testing at maximum output into a load, it got ridiculously hot very quickly. So do make sure there is plenty of airflow over this wherever you're placing it in your aircraft. It won't be so much of a problem on a quad, but if you're putting this in a plane, do make sure that it has the airflow. It has that heat sink on the back. So all you need to do is get it in the right place and that should keep the temps under control. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. If you found this video interesting, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. If you'd like to support the channel, there are links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It is only by you guys using those links am I able to keep buying products like this to give you independent reviews and share with you my thoughts. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe and I will speak to you guys again soon.